right now. Let's uh, connect right now with uh, Pat Donaldi. Uh, is, will there be a potential for flooding in Jakarta here today, Pat? Good morning. Uh, good morning. Hi. Uh, Hi, yeah, uh, I think as we see on the weather forecast for Jakarta, uh, there will be only the light rain to medium rain today. Okay. So, potentially flood will not uh, occur today. Thank goodness. So, I'm still able to get home. By the way, this is uh, Padonaldi Sukma Permana, <laughs> who is uh, BMKG's Climate Research Division Coordinator. Thank you for joining us this morning. Let's have a look at some of the other areas. In my hometown, Bandung, light and medium rain will occur in the afternoon and evening. So you can enjoy the partially cloudy weather in the morning, but still don't forget to put on your sunscreen. And that is Bandung. Let's have a look now at Semarang. Uh, they're forecasting light rain to happen in the evening. So those of you in Semarang will be able to enjoy your day there as well. Now, judging from the forecast in Jogjakarta, Jogja is secure from floods as right, light rain is forecasted to happen at night. Now, if we shift our focus over to Surabaya, Make sure you prepare your umbrellas because medium rain will likely happen in the afternoon. The rest of the day will remain cloudy. Now, over in Makassar, light rain will also be happening uh, for the most of the morning. So enjoy your day, those of you out there in Makassar. Let's uh, head on over to Medan as well now. And those in Medan, uh, you will have some clouds to accompany you today. But other than that, it should be fairly clear. Moving over to Jayapura, Papua has experienced many floods and landslide disasters as of late. But if we look at today's weather forecast in particular, there's no rain to be expected. We hope that those areas affected by the flood and landslides will be able to recover soon. Uh, Padunaldi, how about Papua Jayapura? Uh, is there still potential for floods or landslides there? And if so, what areas will likely be prone to those uh, disasters? Um, yeah, as uh, we know that uh, Papua is always uh, rainy, actually, in every season. And I think uh, over the last two months, uh, they experienced the heavy rainfall. But I think uh, this month is a little bit less. Mm. But still, some areas are still uh, prone to landslide because it also depends on the, the type of the, uh, the land itself. And then... Uh, still, the, the rainfall may occur in this area. All right, so uh, let's have a look at Aceh. Uh, great news out of Aceh. It's going to be bright, no rain out there. The flood that did occur in Aceh was uh, reportedly was caused by shallowing estuaries. So, uh, Padunaldi, what actually caused the floods in Aceh? Is it because of the shallowing estuary? And if so, how can that be avoided uh, in the future? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I this month, like during the December, January, February, actually most rainfall are focused on the Java, Bali, and Nusa Tenggara Islands. So a little bit good news for Aceh because the rainfall will, will be less this mm -hmm. month. But I mean, maybe the previous months, uh, there is uh, rains over there. And then uh, we see that some uh, estuary or river are shallowing. So this is also one of the possible that, can, that may cause the floods. I think one of the possibilities is just to make sure the, the estuary is getting restored. I mean, the, the shallowing part will be, uh, will be removed. Okay. Yeah. All right. So and last but not least, if we look at Sintang, we can see that night and medium, light to medium rain will likely occur in the afternoon into the evening. And as we remember in late 2021, Sintang was affected as well by floods that was caused by heavy rains and the water reserve area decreased. So last but not least, uh, Sintang, uh, Padunaldi, is this area prone, still prone to long-term flooding again? Uh, yeah, so actually 2021 is uh, one of the La, La Nina years mm -hmm. that may uh, cause a lot of rain, especially over the, the Kalimantan. But uh, rainfall, uh, the, the flood that occurred in Sintang is a little bit uh, interesting because uh, they're kind of like a shallow watershed right. that the rainfall should go to the river. But since the river has a, a shallowing uh, as well, and then we have the high tide over the ocean, so the, the water is still there and then cannot move to the ocean. Right. Okay. So, uh, Padanaldi, thank you so much for joining in in this uh, weather report. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit sure. more about hydrometeorology. And for that, let me send it over to my colleagues, Marissa and Wibby. Guys, take it away.
Thanks, Paul. Yes, as shown in the weather forecast, it is the beginning of the year and it is the time when Indonesia is drenched in heavy rains and this may lead to flooding in parts of the country, right? That's maybe? right. The, the Meteorology, uh, Climatology and Geophysics Agency, otherwise known as the BMKG, have mapped out the potential flood areas in Indonesia that, is, that will be caused by rainfall this year. Yes, BMKG on Tuesday released a warning on potential hydrometeorological disasters happening in Indonesia from January till March this year. And of course, to find out more about this, what to expect, what kind of preparedness needed to be in place in the face of these potential disasters, we again speak with Donaldi Sukmapermana, coordinator of Climate Research Division in BMKG. Pak Donald, thank you so much for still joining us. So Pak Donald, could you please Explain what are the potential hydrometeorological disasters Indonesia is about to face in the next three months. Uh, yeah, uh, in Indonesia, uh, usually we consider like December, January, February, maybe up to March is as a rainy season right, due to the the monsoons. And so basically in this period, we will expect uh, extreme and heavy rainfall that may cause several natural uh, hazards, sometimes we call it as a hydrometeorological disasters. Uh, and this can be like uh, thunderstorms, lightnings, uh, even hailstones, that all of this may trigger the flood, even a flash flood in some, some area. And landslide uh, is, and also the storm surge or the coastal flood. But Donaldi, you mentioned before about the La Nina causing a huge uh, rain around the region here in Indonesia. Can you elaborate more on that, on the La Nina, and what other factors may be in play that is causing this heavy rainfall, uh, you know, during this monsoon? Uh, yeah, actually, several months ago, like uh, BMKG had announced that the warning that the, there is an active a La Nina condition since I think since uh, September up to uh, at least up to March this uh, 2022 and actually this La Nina uh, caused by the global uh, global phenomena due to the uh, the sea surface temperatures over Indonesia are warmer than the normal condition hmm. and and usually this this condition and bring more water vapor and hence rainfall over Indonesia so in some region it, it may increase like 40% up to 70% of the rainfall over Indonesia. And yeah, of course, this this, uh, this condition will increase the potential of the hydrometeorological uh, hazards in Indonesia. Right. Speaking of hydrometeorological hazards, we also need to talk about disaster or natural disaster preparedness, right, Pak Donal? So, uh, in your view, what kind of natural disaster preparedness that must be in place to avoid casualties? Uh, yeah, actually the the rainfall is just a trigger, right? I mean, the disasters can happen if the the, the infrastructure at the surface is not uh, good enough to to handle the rainfall. So I think one of the preparedness that should be improved is the enhancement of the infrastructures. I mean, the the road, the planning, the urban planning, maybe the sewer should be clean so the water can flow. Uh, smoothly and and importantly as well is the disasters preparedness means that if the the disasters happen so everything should be uh, should be ready like the the, the um, PNBP Basarnas should be also involved in this uh, uh, in this activities. Mm. All right, Pak Donaldi, uh, how is BMKG reaching out to uh, people maybe to reduce uh, their potential such as warnings maybe and disaster preparedness? Uh, is there a way that BMKG can connect directly to the people to warn them with things like this? Uh, yeah, actually uh, we are connecting to our stakeholders in every provinces, especially with the BNPB, Basarnas and even the, the local government. So every Every month, we send them the, the potential uh, disasters, like uh, when the, the rainfall can be uh, heavy, mm. and then also uh, to the to the, in it, the to the, the people, uh, people can access the, the our website, the BMKG website, and uh, we have also the application named the Info BMKG, mm. 
and we can see from this application uh, the daily forecasting the uh, monthly forecasting even the the warning if there is an earthquake so they know uh, if there is potential for tsunami or not so they can uh, move to, to to higher area in the city hmm. right i have a double barrel question here about donald uh, do hmm? we have disaster drills in place in indonesia that's the first one and then the second one is if we have it how often should the public rehearse disaster drills, especially those living in areas prone to being impacted by a hydrometeorological disaster? Mm, I think that's a very good question. Uh, uh, because uh, the, the drills that you said that it's usually uh, we do for the uh, the earthquake case usually. I mean, we have a siren uh, over the close to the coastal. I mean, if there is an earthquake, and if there is potential for tsunami, the siren will uh, on, and everybody will know. And I think this this uh, siren will are uh, tested for every month, so uh, people can understand what does it mean. And in other one, uh, BMKG also do some uh, education outreach to the to the public. Like we go to the school, and we also uh, uh, go to the other uh, stakeholders basically to to improve their knowledge about the, the weather, the climate, so they can understand the possible potential of disasters from this uh, hydrometeorological. Mm, that's right. So, you know, preparation is the the key to facing all these uh, natural disasters. So, uh, but Donaldi, I think we have some uh, graphics that we have prepared here. Uh, stand by for a while. Yeah. yeah, we would like to, to elaborate on the data that we're about to show uh, to our audience as well. Is the data ready? Ah, voila. There you go. Right, there would we you are. please explain and elaborate on this data, Padona? Uh, yeah, actually this map is uh, showing the flood potential uh, that has been made uh, December 2021 mm. and for the January up to March 2022. So in this a map it's shown that uh, most of the Indonesian area especially the, the Java Bali Nusa Tenggara Island and most part of Kalimantan and southern part of Sumatra are uh, have a moderate potential of floods and we can also see some red uh, area uh, that is basically a uh, northern part of South Sulawesi mm. and the South East Sulawesi uh, and then also some of Papua provinces that have a uh, high potential for floods but again this data is from december 2021 and i think this month we have updated in our website okay. and uh, we can see uh, if there is any changes okay. uh, the one that i uh, see that uh, in february the, the possibility there is a high potential floods over the central java and also the the south Sulawesi. But yeah, we have to see the, the website just to make sure if there is any change because we update it every every month in our website. All right, so we'll have to look at the updates on the BMKG website. Now, uh, one more, Pa uh, Donaldi. So if we look at uh, Southeast Asia as a region, is uh, every country, uh, is the whole region experiencing the same increased uh, flood potential uh, as Indonesia? Yes, uh, as I said that uh, this this month and until up to March or April, the, the La Nina event is still going on, uh, and 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 as it is a global event, so the all of the Southeast Asia countries will will uh, face the similar problems, and most of them are actually the increased probability that the the precipitation will be above normal, but again the the detail of this uh, this uh, increased uh, probability will be uh, different at each uh, countries. Mm. Uh, some of them will will have extreme rainfall, and also maybe in in some area uh, we can also anticipate it like uh, tropical cyclones. Right, Padonel. Uh, our last question: Do you have a specific uh, website where the public can access information, especially on? 
on uh, disaster preparedness in a comprehensive way? Uh, I think uh, we, you can access the, the BMKG website, mm -hmm. like uh, bmkg.go.id, mm -hmm. and then you can uh, uh, browse for like uh, uh, weather forecast or other uh, impact uh, forecast like a uh, flood forecast and and other uh, other area but for comprehensive one you you may also access the, the BNTV website I mean because the they also provide the not only the information but also the the impact the possible impact uh, it may include the <coughs> the floods the landslides or others others uh, uh, disasters possibility all right, it's either uh, the website of BMKG or the BNPB. Thank you so much, Pak Donaldi Sukma Permana, Coordinator okay. of Climate Research Division in BMKG. Have a Thank good day. You. Thank you. Good day.